Welcome, welcome guys, it's Patrick here, Eggnot Poker. We're going to be jumping into 100 Zoom, so let's go straight in. Let's get our bins out today, see what we can do. See if we can cause some action in today's video. Hopefully we won't be timing out, that wasn't overly, overly effective in our last video. Hopefully we can be causing some carnage. Apologies again, we are supposed to have a video out yesterday, I did promise that, so apologies, but hopefully this will be a good one today. Having a look at the NL100 pool today, it looks absolutely egregious, it's full of pretty decent regs and absolutely awful nits, so probably not going to be making a huge amount of money this session, probably not at all, but we'll do our best. Not going to be considering any 3-bets to nine suited, especially against someone with 28 bigs, 29 bigs. As always, guys, just get it out of the way real early. Thank you so much again to everyone who's been subscribing and joining the Discord and the Twitch. Twitch is going to be a little bit postponed for full time and just for a little while until I get this internet sorted. I really don't want to stream at 7.20 for four tables. And I feel like the um, internet is just, it's not really sufficient to be... Um, to be streaming on. So we will, be, it's still going to happen, but we're just going to see what we can do and hopefully we can get it resolved ASAP. Um, in terms of the content though, we are going to be um, 3 billion in the big blinds with the Ace King suited and we take it down. Um, again though, just thank you so much. Like The community is getting bigger every day. We're getting new uh, new followers, new subscribers, new Discord members and it's just awesome man. It's, it's just so sick. It's uh, I mean, you know, we're a tiny channel, right? But, you know, we're growing. We've only been around for a couple of weeks and I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying doing the content and I hope you guys are enjoying watching it and um, yeah, so there we go. Um, just as a thing as well, I just want to say this, and I want to just be honest with this and say this now, just because there's, there's been a few people inquiring about things like coaching. There's been a few people who have been inquiring um, about the analytics and content and the um, some of the technical points. I want to put this out there and just say that this is purely content, right? I'm not pretending I'm the best in the world. I'm not pretending I'm an absolute end boss. And I don't want to say like I'm advertising um, like, hey, come and coach with me, or hey, come and do this. I'm absolutely not doing that. I mean, like this, that's not the purpose of this channel whatsoever. I just, I just want to play, you know? I, I love playing, it's what I do, and I enjoy it, and try and make it work for a living, and I just want people to say, hey, look, you know, I enjoy you, I enjoy, I enjoy you, I enjoy watching your content, I want to subscribe to you and just watch you. That's the priority for me, so just want to get that out of the way. I'm not always going to make the best move, and I'm sometimes going to make mistakes, absolutely, so don't, you know, don't give me too much credit. Don't, you know, don't don't hurt me too much. Sit back, enjoy, relax. Anyway, moving back on to the content and stopping uh, and stop blabbling about rubbish. So interesting spot. So we're going to be uh, mostly calling, I believe, on the turn with the two pair. Called raise pre turn two pair. I think we're only calling here because we could still absolutely be dead to a lot of villains value range. Hands like eight nine jacks, ace jack, ace ten tens, and uh, we're still ahead of a bunch of bluffs and semi bluffs. So easy call. And the river's a very interesting spot. I would expect Villain to be giving up or betting huge because he's going to be repping a lot of flushes. He's going to be repping some straights. Uh, and he's going to have a lot of hands that don't want to bet this river because I'm going to have a lot of Atex. I'm going to have a lot of backdoor flushes. So I'm really, really hoping a Villain checks. Hmm. Against Small, I'm then debating binning this because I know that we don't win... Because villain's not supposed to be value betting ace king or ace queen uh, on this river. The only problem is for this price, I just don't see how we fold. And I don't see us turning a hand not this strong, but this relatively strong hand on showdown as a fold, considering we're getting five to one. I, as a disclaimer, I do think we're probably going to lose this a decent amount of the time, which is fine. But I think with this price and this level of candidate of hand, I don't think we get to fold and I don't think we get to turn it into a bluff. If Villain's got a correct bluffing strategy and he will have some small sizes on the river, but he's not really supposed to have too many, then fine. If the Villain's a knit and doesn't have any bluffs, I would just fold there pure and I wouldn't consider calling. Um, I'm only calling there purely just to make sure I'm not getting absolutely run over and abused, but I do kind of think maybe it might be an exploitative pure fold. <laughs> But for that price, I mean, Jesus. 
It is sad though, like people are still just literally betting a quarter pot because they just have a hand they want to get thin value for, but their hand is kind of toilet in uh, in terms of what their range is supposed to be blasting on the river with. But we're going to have a massive thunderstorm outside, so if we get massive lightning bolts coming out the back, I do apologise. Be over the pocket fives on an 84. Again, we're not opening uh, fives to reduce as pure. Sixes and above are, but fives to reduce are going to be a mixed roll. Flopping set, that's always good. I think we're going to start with about a third. Would love a raise, but I'm not going to get it. Uh, I was debating whether to do some three betting with the ace jack, but we're not going to be four betting. Ten seven suited, we will be defending. I don't know if people have a mixed strategy in terms of limping at the stake. I'm not going to discount it, so I'm not just going to say this guy's a recreational he's limping because he absolutely may not be. Limping is absolutely a thing in a in a high level strategy. Go over the check. Play some post four. Uh, let me check about the flop. Probably calling turn. Don't know if I want to value bet this on the turn. I don't think I do. I don't think I need to do anything with this hand except check. I think checking, uh, I think betting getting raised is a disaster. I don't think we get value from, I mean, we get value from a couple of hands, but those hands can also raise as well. And villain can easily have an uncapped range, so checking back's fine. Debating a value bet on the river, this is very close, I think. With a, I think with backdoor diamonds coming in, I'm just going to check this back and show down. Again, it's kind of a case of we probably know we know we're probably good, but what do we really target for value? And there's not that much, so it was actually not that bad, to be honest. I thought it was worse than this got a few relatively decent regs some tighter regs people some overfolders and some people uh, i'm never going to shout people out but people who are folding to steals like 70 to 80 percent folding to three bets like 80 90 percent and they're the better regs so people still i'm not calling other people out i'm just saying there are definitely still players in here that are beatable and people who will including myself who will have uh, some leaks in some areas of improvement that can be abused We'll be playing the 10 9 suit. I believe we can call, we can free boot. I'm gonna roll a call. And a gut shot. So we are primarily three betting pocket jacks. Uh, I think we do do some C betting when check two, even though Villain is supposed to be checking back quite a decent amount at the time. Because Villain's gonna have all of the best hands. He's gonna be opening sevens, he's gonna be opening jacks. He's gonna be check raising a decent amount at the time. I don't mind having a check back sometimes. And I rolled 11, so I am gonna check, but I absolutely do not mind betting. If I was gonna be betting, I'd probably be betting relatively small just because Villain's got such a strong, uh, a strong range. And now we abs the queen improves our opponent, obviously, with some hands like ace, queen, king, queen, pocket queens, queen, jack, etc. But we absolutely have to be um, betting this turn because we only have 10 high in a gut shot. So now we need to add this into our bluffing range, I believe. If we're going to be betting a flush, I'm usually betting pretty big here. I'm not going to be betting small on this node with something like king, queen, for example. And we're going to take it down. Nice. That's cool. So, for example, if I had king, queen there, I'd actually be checking back quite a lot. Whereas something like 10 high, for example, with a gut shot is quite a nice candidate to use as a bet there. And we're going to be opening the king five on the hijack. Um, yes, we are, I believe. 
I rolled six, but I think we open it pure on a uh, TPB open strategy. In the hijack. And um, we will be folding 2 3, but uh, we don't get it. Pretty, uh, pretty mixed board. I think just checking back is going to be making uh, our lives a lot easier. Don't have any backdoor diamonds, don't really have any backdoor hands going on. Well, we have a few, but not too many. Going to check back and see if we can realize. So the seven is going to be interesting because our opponent's going to have eight seven more than us. Opponent's going to have five six more than us. Our opponent's going to have sevens. We both have sevens. Opponent's going to have more hands like ten seven. We have a five, so we can do some potential bluffing here, representing five six. So I don't mind that. I think if I was going to check back and bet the turn, I'd be betting large here. I don't think I'd be betting small. I think. Don't hold me to that. Go the large size. So we're repping something like an overpair, repping something like 5-6, repping something like pocket 4s, 7-8. I think we should have overbet, to be honest, actually. I don't think I like betting just large. Um, with the river flush completing and the fact that Villain has checked twice, I don't think Villain's going to have a 10 all that often. And I think he's going to have a lot of one pair and combo draws or backdoor flush combos. So I think I'm just going to check back my top pair. I think I should have overbet the turn, actually, considering how narrow of a range I was saying that I was supposed to be having. If I had something like aces there that checked back the flop and bet the turn, I think I would have just gone bigger, to be honest. And the 6 3 offsuit, I'm going to be folding. Not going to be doing too many shenanigans with that one. Uh, King 5 suited is going to be a mixed open, I believe. We're order 68, so we are going to be opening it. It's going to be a recreational player, I believe, if we're going to face a hijack call. Uh, we're going to be following the King 5 to squeeze. Again, guys, just a quick note. Massive shout out and thank you to everyone who's been following and supporting the channel. And again, if you are new, please do like and subscribe comment on the videos it makes a massive difference this algorithm on youtube absolutely loves comments and likes and god knows what else so please interact with the channel if you enjoy the content please please subscribe hit that bell icon throw your comments on throw your likes on throw your uh, your messages on just get involved join the group you know getting bigger and uh we need you hey it's jack off we are going to be playing this one uh, taking it down. Nothing too exciting so far. I do wonder in an exploit universe if we can ever just pure fold, even to like even getting like four to one or whatever on the river with that Jack Ten. As sad as that sounds, I do wonder if we literally are just never good, even though we're supposed to call maybe in theory. But I mean, it's kind of sad that you just never expect to get shown bluffs. So uh, this is going to be a three bet with the kings. Let's raise that one up, see if we can get some action. Our opponent is very aggressive over a small sample. But again, it's a small sample, so it's all relative. Hmm. Flopping a set of kings. I think we're going to be pure betting this board. I believe we can uh, do a couple of mixed sizes. Uh, I'm going to start with 25% this time. So we're not going anywhere with a set of kings. With this kind of setup... If he's got a flush, he's going to win our money. That's the way we're kind of seeing this. We're not going to be checking for, the, you know, trying to do whatever. We're just going to be betting for value and calling off against some um, other hands. It is unfortunate, though, because if you're, if I was at something like a lower stake, uh, I would be a bit cautious around calling, like, big raises and so on because these guys always just have the friggin' nuts. Like, they've always just got it, haven't they? Uh, we're just going to be shoving this node. We can potentially 10% as well. So, for example, if he's got a hand like... Um, well, I was going to say if he's got a hand like King Jack of Clubs. 
King Jack of Spades, King Jack of Diamonds. Uh, sorry, um, Queen Jack and um, ten jacks of combos and some weaker hands that might turn themselves into bluffs. If we bet 10% on the river, we induce that. However, because we block so many combos of like King X, for example, and we block a lot of combos of hands in between, uh, so we unblock hands in between, we could have easily gone for a 10% there, or we could have easily just shoved and looked to get called by the ace queens, ace jacks, which we unblock. We get called by all the flushes as well. If you check there and he checks back a hand like ace 10, even though he shouldn't, it's a bit of a disaster. Um, but you can go both ways there. 10%ing that river and jamming, I think, are both completely fine. I don't think betting any other size with Warren um, would, would be ready, um, any good. I'm gonna check this time out of position on the monotone. And looking to either check call or check raise. Roll to 76, so I'm going to be going with a check raise. I think we can do a couple of sizes. I can go for a smallish size or I can go for a big one. Go for a big one this time on a high roll. So if we had a hand like pocket fours, pocket fives, ace queen, king queen, we can do some betting, we can do some checking depending on what parts of range we have. He can have hands like uh, queen x, some mid pocket pairs. I don't mind betting, I don't mind checking. I'm going to go with a check this time on a 33. And then the way this um, hand has now gone, I could have a hand like 6-7 um, of spades, for example. That may have check raised the flop, check the turn. Could have a hand like... Ugh, I'm trying to find bluffs here. I don't have that many. I'm going to go for an overbet size. Try and target something like king-queen, ace-queen, queen-jack. It's an interesting spot because when you check raise and the and the, and the uh, four flush comes on the turn, you're so polarized now. But then we go check check there. I'm trying to find bluffs. I do have a few, but not that many. So I'm trying to say to myself, what why would I do um, if I gave up on that turn and then bluff the river? Say for example, I had like a low open ender or like over under to the um, top pair that I was check raising. I'd probably go for an over bet there. So or something like 60, 70 percent. So the 5-7 suited would naturally be a fold. However, this guy's basically min-raised us. I <laughs> Would we just be pure folding to like a 9 or 10? Uh, I don't actually know if we should be calling this against a 6, 7 and a half. I'm going to let this go because this hand is so bad. But I, uh, this might just be a defend, to be honest. I think if I had something like 5-6 or 6-7... Or a stronger hand, I'd be calling pure to that. I think 5-7. Oh, no, it's probably just a defender, actually, thinking about it. Especially if we think they're recreational players, which they probably are for that size. I like we're making a couple of uh, questionable decisions today. Maybe we could have played a little bit better in a couple of spots so far. Going to be defending the ace-8. We could do some 3-betting. We've rolled an 8, so we are going to be defending. We have to be a little bit more careful against the 3x, but this hand is going to be in there, I believe. Uh, we're going to be checking this board. I don't think we're going to be doing any donking. Snap check back. So this way, this is where exploitation comes in. I want to do a lot of checking here in theory to protect my range. Exploitatively, when this guy snap checks back, I don't. I think I just want to be betting for value. I, don't th I think this guy's going to be a recreational when he snap checks back a lot. Um... Backdoor spades, some two pairs like Queen Jack come in, Pocket Queens come in, King 10 comes in. I think exploitatively I'm just going to get bet small and target something like maybe King Jack or like Ace 3 and then just fold to raise. Which is very exploitative by the way, this is not a thing, but we're purely doing it against um, the recreational type player. Oh, of course. I didn't even realize. This is how bad I am, guys. I was like, oh, maybe I could get called by a worse ace as well and forgot that something like ace three or something would be a chop anyway. That's how bad I am. Uh, we're going to be raising the kings. But I just think he's going to have a lot of showdown type hands. And I think we could just about sneak in a tiny amount of value on the river from him. Um, imagine he's just got a hand like a pocket pair or like a second pair that he just can't fold you know for five to one six to one or whatever on the river it's just a good spot against a recreational exploitation exploitatively that is whereas against a decent player or a reg or whatever i'd just be checking the turn just to kind of protect my range easy call obviously with the kings good luck 
Obviously, we run into Oasis for against a 25 big blind stack. It's kind of sad, I guess, but there you go. I said, no, Gash is out! If you want to tilt me, do that, by the way. That would tilt me. That's quite sad, actually, to be honest. Going to be running another five minutes on this video, guys. Let's see if we can get some more spots. I think Jax is going to be an open last time I checked. And uh, taking it down, sadly. King 5 off. Ooh. We're folding, obviously, to the UTG. I'm trying to think of the worst king I would open in the small blind. I think it might be King 7 or King 6. So I think King 5... I think it does a tiny bit of limping and, some, and a lot of folding. I don't think it opens. Ugh, I was going to throw something at this guy for having aces against kings for 30 big blinds, but I've taken off my um, throwables, unfortunately, so I can't throw anything at him. If you see this guy in your games, this um, SHG18, throw something at him. Avenge me. Jack 5 suited, we will be defending. We always flop like second pair in these spots. Um, on the king, I mean, this is the thing. Blind on blind, we don't have to tiptoe as much. I think I'm mostly checking this hand back with some betting. King's a very good card. I think I do want to be betting this now. Um, I'm thinking about sizing. If I check back the flop and bet the turn, I, ugh, I'm kind of thinking for a large sizing. I don't think betting small makes too much sense. I don't think I have to over bet here. I think I can still bet relatively big. Protect my hand against some gut shots, some over cards, some flush draws of both kinds. Getting raised would still suck. Um, but because we're blind on blind, I'm not so concerned about tiptoeing. If this was against like UTG, for example, I wouldn't just be nuking this turn because he can still absolutely have really, really strong hands. And I'm just kind of binning myself in a lot of situations. So I'd be doing a lot more checking, for example. However, against the small blind double check, I think we can do some betting. Betting small would have also been relatively fine, but I think when I say small, I think it would have been better to bet something like half rather than really, really, really big. Um, so we're not going to be folding because we still beat just so many hands. We beat club combos, diamond combos, any hand which you might be turning into a bluff. I mean, I don't know if people even have bluffs at this, this stake even, but I'm not folding a five. I'm blocking pocket fives, king five. We block king jack. We just unblock everything. So cool really easy and then the only hands that improve on the river that would check check raise might be a hand like ace three but i don't think he has ace three could potentially have three six but i don't think he double checks that i think we have an easy check hope he's going to show something like i don't know a seven of diamonds but he's checking a boat okay <laughs> don't really know what's going on in this player's head i mean he could literally just bet the flop bet the turn bet the river or he could just bet the river, for example, and have some bluffs and get some value. Very, very strange. Like, if he's going to check the flop, fine, and then check the turn, also fine. But then if he's going to raise the turn, on a, and then a pure brick comes, like, a lot of my range is just going to be checking back, especially that check back the flop bet called the turn. I'm just going to have a lot of hands. I mean, I know he's given me an opportunity to bluff, which is fair, but I think the way that hand played, it's just, if you're going to raise the turn, you may as well just continue betting the river. Don't let me check back like sevens, for example. Uh, I'm going to fold the seven, eight. Uh, folding the queen deuce. And the 10 7. And the 5 8. Fold, 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 fold. Ace deuce will be a not, it won't be a pure open. I've rolled quite low, so I'm going to be folding. Sorry if that makes me look like a knit, I apologize. Last 30 seconds or so, see if we can sneak another hand in, if we can find it. Not going to be the jack four, though. 
Aha, ice cream would be lovely. This is going to be our last hand. I believe we're going to be three betting this one. Let's get some money in here. We'll be calling if we get four bet. Although, again, I do also wonder if people actually have bluffs at this level, because so far we have not been shown a single one. Um, the board isn't very, very good or very, very bad for the small blind. Um, we're basically betting pretty big or we're checking. I think on this roll I'm going to bet a bit bigger. I'm thinking debating between sort of half and three quarters. I'm going to go for a big bet this time. So because I'm betting, because I'm betting bigger this time, I, I basically I'd be doing a decent amount of checking and a decent amount of relatively bigger betting, like a bit of fifty, a bit of seventy, something like that. Um, this is what on, on these types of boards, because I'm not going to be um, three betting pocket fours and pocket threes a whole bunch. I'm not going to be three betting like um, seven eight or eight nine or hands that kind of interact with the eight that are really 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 strong, except pocket eights for example. I'm going to have loads of hands like king queen, king jack, king ten, ace ten, nine ten, blah 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 blah. So we either hit it, we smash it, or we miss it, right? So we're checking a lot, or we're betting really really big. So I mean, we don't have to go nuke, but bigger sizes. Anyway, stop blabbing. So again, thank you so much for watching the content. If you like it, please subscribe. There's still so many of you that watch these videos consistently, but are not subscribed. Get in there. Subscribe, like, comment on the videos, backseat me, go for it. Please do. Join the Discord. Link to the Discord and the Twitch is in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.